Hi LinkedIn, <laughs> another video. I like making videos, they're very fun. Um, okay, so for this video, I would like to talk about the strenuous life. Um, and what does that mean? So I'm, I'm just going to kind of uh, share my own, my own personal interpretation of what the strenuous life is and what it means exactly. Um, so if you guys are familiar with the strenuous life, it's, it's just basically an idea made by uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Again, Theodore Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt. What man could, is better than Theodore Roosevelt? I say nobody, as far as I can tell. <laughs> um, so if you don't know who Theodore Roosevelt is, you, you guys need to, uh, uh, wake up. I'm kind of sleepy right now. Um, I didn't get woke up like at I think like 5 30 in the morning. It was pretty early. <laughs> That's the strenuous life right there. But, um, so Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th president of the United States of America, um, died at the age of 60, died of a cerebral hemorrhage in his sleep. Uh, let's see here. Got elected twice, was going to run for a third term, but did it because of his morals. Um, so why does this matter? Well, because I want to give you a bit of context on the strenuous life so you know the person that made the idea and made, not even the idea, it's just a way of practicing how to live. How do you live well? How do you use your time well? So. One thing we have to note about Theodore Roosevelt's character is that he's obsessed with nature. He's obsessed with going out into the forest, going out into the journey, going out on the challenge, starting something, making something new, which is what we need right now. Um, he, he was a naturalist, read dozens of books a day, did boxing, wrestling, challenging himself. He believed in war, masculinity, things of that nature. So now this can be taken for either a man or, or, or a girl or a woman. It really doesn't matter, but it's just, he was very vigorous. He was exuberant. He, he, he gave up a lot of energy. And he was driven because he wanted to experience the great life. He wanted to be remembered. And he is remembered on Mount Rushmore. And there are statues of him everywhere. He even has a river named after him called the Theodorus. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Um, so what else did he do? So he knows a lot about birds, trees, nature. He wrestles a lot. He boxes. He, he got blind in one eye and as the four, uh, and during his second term at the age of 54, at 195 pounds. He was overweight at that point, but still that's amazing and what else did he it just he he was a vigorous reader he published 35 books 35 that is astounding he got shot one time by a, an assassin and he made a speech even though he had just barely gotten shot because he was driven that's how you got to be even though a person shot him to death a uh, shot him uh, he still gave a speech and showed it to every single person in the audience. He's like, I have just been shot and this is my moment. He's calling attention to himself. He's making his moment. The point of this though is that it, it ex exemplifies his character as a person. He believed in morality. He was a Christian. Now, th this one's debatable. You can take it however you wish. But uh, he has strong moral foundation. His father was uh, gave to the poor. He, he didn't believe in imbalance of wealth classes. He was a progressive. So this is just a bit of context on the president himself. So... Um, so he made he made a speech in around uh, 1916 or 1917, and he, uh, no, I think it's 1912. It doesn't matter, but he makes a speech and he talks about the strenuous life. The strenuous life is about doing vigorous activity because that will challenge you and develop your character. 
going out into the forest, into the woods, camping, breaking down logs, cutting trees down. Uh, <laughs> you're probably like, how the heck is that? I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to uh, be experiencing it for myself very soon to see what the strenuous life is really all about. But so the strenuous life in, in a bigger sense is about experiencing the world, experiencing things for yourself, learning about things for yourself, not taking other people's advice, not learning from them. Learn from yourself. Learn from experience. Don't learn through books. He didn't believe in books. He, well, he read through a day, but he learned through experiences. He learns through action. He doesn't stop and wait. He hates waiting. I hate waiting. <laughs> After his presidency, he goes ahead and with his son, uh, I think he call, calls him Kinnikins. They go into a jungle he's never heard of. He, he, he writes to his wife that he expects to die. To die. That is astounding. Look, like We have to like really comprehend what, what's going through this man's mind. He's it going into the jungle to die why why that's the strenuous life he wants to challenge himself he's at he's about like i think 53 at this point 54 blind in one eye he's been shot and he just lost his election to woodrow wilson and he wants to go into the jungle it's astounding astounding now we have to figure out what's going through this man's head. Why is he doing that? Why would he want to kill himself? What's the reason behind this? Well, the reason behind this is very simple. He understands this thing called the mission, the, the, the hero's journey, if you will. The journey is what makes the man or makes the woman. It's what it will make you. You need a journey or a mission that can make you make or break you because you need to fail and you need to get stronger. Being productive is not enough. It's not enough to be productive. It's not enough to work hard. That's not enough. We all can do that. What he does, he takes it to a next level. He he finds the hardest thing he can find. He probably knows he's going to die and he does it because he needs to grow. I need to grow. I need to remake myself. To remake yourself, you have to go into the fire like like lot like a piece of metal and be remelted down into a new sword because the blade has been blunted. And he does, and he almost dies from malaria. And he comes back. Granted, 10 years of his life had been shortened, but he came back. Did it make him good or bad? I don't know. But the point being is, we need to find our mission. Find your mission. We. The point I'm, I want to make about the strenuous life is about pursuing bigger, going out to nature, experiencing the world, challenge yourself, fail. Fell and fell again. Constantly fell. Fell as much as you can. Learn from it and fell. If there's something you're afraid, what? Uh, if there's something you are afraid to do, own it. Own it. Own it. Truly, own it. Find that mission. What is your mission? It's not enough to work hard, and it's not enough to be productive. It's not even enough to goal set. What? What is it you want to leave with your life when you are gone? What? What is it you want to leave? What will they remember you for? Do you want to be remembered as someone who did nothing or did great things? That's how greatness is achieved and that's how he achieved it because he wanted to make that difference and that's what the strenuous life is all about. Going on horseback, hunting, fishing. All these things probably you're wondering are don't teach you with you, but they do. They teach you self-reliance and self Discipline and independence. Independence is paramount to, uh, to accomplishment because you have to rely on your own resources and nobody else. The forest will punish you if you fail. You must succeed. So, so I mean, and here's one more example. After his uh, wife Alice dies in a fire and he loses his mother. They both die on him. He's only about 24 at the time and he, he's a council member and he goes to the Badlands. They call it the Badlands because they say the land looks like death. He stays there for three and a half years, doesn't know a soul and he becomes one of the best cowboys there. And then he makes the Rough Riders. <laughs> so 
these are the things we have to keep in mind if we want to adopt this strenuous life. If you want to adopt this strenuous life, you need to follow those steps. Go out into the nature, go out in the woods, climb some mountains, rocks, whatever that is, and learn self-reliance. Stop depending on technology. Don't depend on Google. Don't depend on your, your government. Don't depend on other people to solve your problems for you. You need to depend on yourself and only yourself. And then through that, you will attain what you need. Th Thank you, LinkedIn.